Okay, so it's time for us to take a look at some headlines on some national dailies. And do not forget that on Off the Press, Mr. Ezekiel Nyetok will be joining us to analyze the headlines. But we we'll begin this morning with the Punch newspaper. And the Punch leads with PDP Labour Party kicks as U.S. Secretary of State calls to Nubu. The writer there, U.S promises continued comprehensive security economic cooperation. Atiku LP Berate Blinken say phone call demoralizing, worrisome. Confusion as LP factions clash, clash at tribunal. Right in front there you will see a picture of uh, one of the factional leaders, Alaba. Mm. Uh, being uh, a papa, protect a papa. I beg your pardon. Mm. Being protected by the police as he's being manhandled uh, by some aggrieved members of the party. You find details of that on page seven of the Punch newspaper. On the masthead, you have. I regret back in Tambuwal to become speaker. That's Bajabiamila. <laughs> Details of that you find on page eight. <laughs> I don't know why I find this funny. Details of that you find on page eight. Seven banks find one billion naira for forex offenses. About time. Page 23 is where you have details of that. Matawale urges EFCC to probe presidency officials and ministers. Details of that you find on page seven of the punch newspaper minister carpets resident doctors as strike grounds hospitals you find details of that on page 22 and u.s demands justice for slain consulate officials details of that is on page seven of the punch newspaper that's the much i'll be taking from the punch newspaper this morning Away from the punch, uh, I'll move on next to the daily independent newspaper. The lead story this morning, fear of impeachment reps kick as Gwajabiamila adjourns plenary indefinitely. Writer, several writers there, but then above the mustard, other stories are also making headlines this morning. The resident doctors are still in the news. Resident doctors strike. We've started negotiations, says federal government, uh, with the writer. We've not been invited to any meeting. Uh, the doctors are quoted on that. Rising debt stock. Governors worried Nigeria may go under. But that's not a good news for us. Hmm. Uh, just below this pictorial here, LP supporters mob factional chairman Apapa in court with two writers. Uh, INEC refuses to provide 70% of electoral documents. That's according to the LP presidential candidate Peter Obi. Apapa group plotting to invalidate LP victories nationwide, the party is saying. On the red strip there, Buhari condemns killing of U.S. embassy staff mayhem in Bene and Plateau states. Other stories, the stakeholders condemn aviation agencies 40% revenue contribution to federation accounts. Federal government takes possession of second Niger bridge May the 20th, says gas supply challenge to Genco's responsible for power shortages. PDP talks tough, or PDP talks tough over indiscriminate suspension of members Next five years set to be hottest period ever. That's um, from the United Nations and presidential election. I mean, disbelief blinking called Tinubu. That's Atiko saying. Those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Independent. And um, from the Daily Independent, we go to the Guardian newspaper, which leads with battle in states as 18 ministers lobby Tinubu to retain portfolio. From one government to another government? Okay. You find details of that on page six of the Guardian newspaper. Article in disbelief as U.S. Secretary calls Tinubu pledges support for incoming government. Details of that is on page three of the Guardian newspaper. 
Doctor strike grounds activities at National Hospital. Page three is where you find that. Telcos give banks ultimatum on USSD debt as presidency steps in. You find details of that on page 24. PPC, INEC, OB resume hostilities at tribunal. LP leaders fight over chairmanship tussle. You find details of that on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper. And that's it for the Guardian. All right, the last paper we are reviewing this morning is the Nation newspaper. The main story for this morning, expect institutional reform, Stinable promise Nigerians. Uh, two writers, uh, U.S. Secretary of State calls President-elect on phone. Kiyamo chides fuming, or chides a fuming Atiku for criticizing Blinken's actions. Uh, just uh, below the masthead on uh, the Red Strip U.S., Buhari condemned killing of embassy officials and policemen. Above the masthead, doctor strike is all over the papers this morning. Hospitals paralyzed in Lagos, Abuja, Calabar, others, Ondo, Yobe, or shown yet to join patients for evacuation. ex methodist prelate Mbang dies at 86, Akere Dulu, Burfis, Alasha Dura, PGP agents. All right, uh, EFCC rights uh, outgoing governors. Matawali beam searchlight on federal government agencies. Uh, INEC will be unwilling to pay exhibit certificate fee. LP faction chair, a papa beating up after clash with Abure Group in court. And 90% of Siemens power equipment delivered, says federal government. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper this Thursday morning. And we do have Ezekiel Anyatok, public affairs analyst, joining us from Akwa Ibom State. Good morning, Mr. Anyatok. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be on your program. All right. So before we begin to talk about all the drama playing out on the political scene, all that we saw at the tribunal yesterday and everything, I want us to talk about this uh, headline on the Punch newspaper to lead with. Seven banks fined one billion naira for forex offenses. What's your take on this one? You know, um, I'm not sure that uh, people would like to hear. Well, let me say the banks would like to hear my opinion. You see, there are three bodies, institutions, agencies that I'm really trying to see where to rate them as to who are the number one as being the problem of Nigeria. We talk of the politician. The politician could never do anything without the civil servants mm -hmm. with them. Because if you know how government works, you can't raise a memo, you can't do anything. And it starts with raising the memos and then goes up the line implementation without the civil servants. You can't. The processes and the procedures put the civil servants on the driving seat. So I'm asking myself, to what extent are they not complicit in the situation we find ourselves in in Nigeria? And of course, uh, the politicians, the civil servants, and the banks. In my opinion, the banks are the biggest problem that we have in Nigeria. The banks are the safe heavens, the banks are the funding institutions, the banks are every single thing. You, you can't do anything without the banks. Mm -hmm. And if the banks wanted to cooperate with EFCC, they would tell you where the, you know, the, the illicit funds are trapped. But you see, self-preservation is the first law of nature, they say. They need these monies, they need these deals for them to survive and you know, declare the... the, 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 the the large, you know, profits that they make. And who are the owners of the banks? Will they be able to take, are they not government people largely? Will they be able to take decisions that will be against the policies of government? Mm. So we you talk in terms of Forex. Now, who are those making the Forex available? The central bank. Now, what's the relationship between the central bank ownership, in quote, and the commercial banks? Are these deals and dealings lost on the central bank? Are they not aware? 
to what extent are they complicit is a very, very complicated web because we have come into a situation where state capture is the essence of public office holders and not service to the people. Where government does not really believe in what the constitution says, chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2b, that states that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Mm. I think right now it's been changed to become the, the, the security and the welfare of myself and my family shall be the primary purpose of my finding myself in government and I must make means of it before I leave. So I think that that, that story is one that Nigerians need to wake up and um, decide to take their nation in their hands, but waiting for the banks, the banks are just there for their profit, and not just and the people that should sanction the banks are largely the people that are the owners of the banks. You know, I'll tell you a little story, and uh, very quickly on that. One of my friends got into a, got into um, one of the organizations and was really, really, in fact, dug deep to see where the real corruption was and raised a memo and the day that she presented the memo and she discovered that everybody was very quiet why because the 18 companies that she brought up to be the companies that are sucking the whole establishment dry were owned by the directors and here you are bringing those companies to the directors to sanction those companies and eventually she had to resign and go back uh, to leave the country what am i saying we need to wake up and smell the coffee and discover that we are giving yam to goat to keep and ask ourselves, how do we come out of this? Yeah, how do we come out of it? Can we come out of it? Do you think we can ever come out of it? Has it yes, not been so can. institutionalized I'm, and deep? I'm, I am an incurable optimist in this nation, Nigeria. I've given my life for the past 10 years particularly to this country, because this country has been too good to me. Nigeria has given me anything I needed, wanted. So for me, it's payback time. Others may not feel that way, but I believe that we will come out of it in my time. Now that we're talking about the bank, telcos uh, have given banks ultimatum on USSD debt as presidency steps in. This is also one of the headlines on the Guardian newspaper. Uh, this this tussle has been going on <laughs> between the the, the, the the telcos and the banks. Now the presidency has stepped in. So how do you see the dynamics now? How do you see it tilting? You see, it's a cat and mouse, a Tom and Jerry play. These guys take they just they just they just take advantage of our vulnerability, our being docile, our being very gullible. And I believe that the relationship between the banks and the telcos is uh, is a game of uh, interest. Who are the owners of the telcos? Who are the owners of the banks? Who are the people in government? Who are the big uh, the people on top? Who are the people behind? It's just it's just a racket, it's just a game. They all know if central bank wants certain things stopped immediately, talking about the USSDs, they know what to do. But will they do it? That's the problem. So it still comes back to the regulation between the central bank. How about the NCC? Mm. No, these these things are just one day on a table and taking that hard political decision to say, let the things be done right. And it's going to come when we have a chief executive is going to be hands on. Mm. Because by the time you over delegate responsibilities, you allow personal interest, which you have not been able to take care of in the first instance, to be the driving essence in our decision taking mechanism. If Mr. President had called all his aides and said, look, you see the red of my eye if you do not do the things the way I want it to be done. I want this issue of corruption off. If I catch you on it, you're going to... You give them that matching order, then you can give them free hand. But you give people free hand, you don't give them a matching order, and they go ahead and do what they want to do, and they're just sucking the country dry, and you don't know what is going on, and you come out and say, I've done my best at all times. I just believe that God will give him life for him to just exit, and God will help us to have a government on the 29th of this, um, of this month, or whatever God feels is the best thing for us to have. 
You know, that's an apt description right, uh, of some of what's been going on. Yeah, just before we leave uh, the Guardian, let's take uh, their main story this morning. You know, uh, ministers lobbying. Anyway, the battle in states has 18 ministers lobby Tinubu to retain portfolio. How does that hit you, Ezekiel? You know, it's, it's one of the things that just irritates me. Mm. What do these people take, me, take us for? We have a country where everything is on the wrong side, on the decline. Who are the administrators of this system? The ministers. After the president, is the ministers. These guys have performed woefully. And they could as much as think of them coming back as what? As reward or as punishment for Nigerians for being docile, for bringing them back. I think that the mere thought of it should infuriate any well-thinking and well-meaning Nigerian. 18 of them. Hmm. Please count on your one hand. The ministers that you can say, these have been the shining stars. These have been, you know, there was a, the time of, of, of uh, President Obasanjo, you could count people that you can say, these are people that are patriotic. They are people that have an understanding of the essence of the office. They are like round pegs in round holes. The additionals, the Okonjo Iwealas, mm -hmm. these are people, the Ezekwesi, these are people that mm -hmm. you, yeah, you could Not count that. on. Yeah, Please tell me the stars in this yeah. administration. You guys are the ones in the media. Or tell me, maybe I don't know. Maybe you <laughs> tell me that you come back. <laughs> We're wondering just like you. <laughs> We're wondering just like you because we don't see them. All right, let's move from that to another headline on the Punch newspaper. PDP Labour Party kick as U.S. Secretary of State calls Tinubu. Yeah. You know, that's another story that I want Nigerians to know that, you know, international diplomacy and interrelationship between countries you need to understand how they operate no country that gives you loan gives you loan because they love you none it's either there is something they can get from you or there's business they can make with you it's always about protecting their own personal interest now look at what happened to that uh, the the, the, the British guy, the lady that was here, after the election, he said, oh, this was fantastic. Mm -hmm. This was wonderful. This was... Then about a month later, she said, oh, that was terrible. And the question is, what happened? Exactly. Okay? Now, the Americans have just imposed visa ban on Nigerians because they believe that things were terribly done. And the next day, the Secretary of State is calling the man and they are aware of the court proceedings. They are aware that election does not end at the ballot box on election day and the result announced. It goes on to the tribunal. It does not end at the tribunal. It goes on to the appeal court. It does not end there for governorship and presidency. It ends at the Supreme Court. You know that the election that was held in Oshun so many months back, it's only about within this past week, that eventually the, pre, the, the governor, Adeleke, could say, I'm sitting well. He could have been removed. Okay? So, but I understand what they are talking about and all those things. But the fact is that Nigerians should know that Americans deal with us based on certain understandings. One of them is just, let there be stability. How can we have stability? And not necessarily justice or the rule of law. That concept of justice and the rule of law is up to us. And it's one of the reasons I am appealing to the Supreme Court to please, not just, no, no, not Supreme Court yet, the, the tribunals tribunal. first, to please be open, be transparent, let everybody follow the processes, because two things are possible. Hmm. The first thing is that Tinubu is eventually declared the man to run the affairs of this country for the next four years. It's a possibility. But you see, there is, if you look at the votes, the vote tallies, just rough figures. Tinubu had about 8 million. Then between um, uh, Labour Party and PDP, you know, they had about 12 million. That means the majority of Nigerians didn't vote for Tinubu. Number two, over 80 million Nigerians registered 
he had about 8 million, which is about 10% of Nigerians endorsed him to be there. What that means, the prognosis of this is that if you have a, there is a large pool of people that are against him, but if the process is transparent, is open, and this will see how it's going, Nigerians are very believing. They are very trusting. They will say, okay, let it be. Four years will not kill. But be transparent about it. Be open about it. The problem will come when there's this abracadabra that comes out. There are too many people on the other side that are against the system that you need to manage it. This, this, I always talk about this emotional intelligence. The court need to show that well, this guy might have been, but you see the processes, this happen, and as a result, Nigerians will understand. So, for the way that article feels, I understand that he should know better not to say it's demoralizing. Mm. He should know better to know that America will always throw the line of least resistance, and they will think in terms of stability of the region, even if it means, you know, bending the law and try to see how they can and make sure it doesn't break, but they can bend it as much as possible. Yeah. When the laws, the court, our own institutions are transparent with the tribunal processes, whatever results comes out, you know, let me end on this. If JAM says, I keep saying this, if JAM says you must have six credits and English before you can get admission, if you like, get 20 credits. If you don't get English, you don't go get the admission. Okay. So I want the Supreme Court in this case well, to be well, very, 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 very in careful. Court, let's in not begin to, you know, begin to talk so deeply about a case in court so that it doesn't become a <laughs> subject. Is, you know what I mean? So, uh, but let, now that we're still talking about the U.S. and their call uh, to the president-elect, let's also touch on this visa ban uh, um, a little bit more. Uh, what's your take on the fact that um, they didn't make names or list the people that have, of course they said certain individuals, and as is customary with them, they didn't name these certain individuals. Neither did the UK when they mentioned, um, say a month ago, a month to, yeah, I think a month ago, that they were also looking at some people, they have about five to 10 persons on their watch list. Because Nigerians yeah, answer, are eager to see the names. Yeah, you, you answered the question that he asked, <laughs> as is customary to them. So, but mine is a little different. Mine is, you see, as long as you give these people visa ban, they don't have any problems. The thing that you will do for all of them to sit up is to tell them that their families hmm. will be removed. Their children we remove from school. They can easily just go, you ban them in, 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 uh, in, in America. Their, their families are there. They just move to Dubai and uh, have family vacation. And then the family goes back to the U.S. The man comes back to Nigeria. They can meet in, in France. They can meet in anywhere. Do you understand me? Mm. But when you tell them that your properties will go, your families will trace them, immediate family, your wife and your children. Let's start from there. They will have to leave the country. The moment you do that, bro, so there will be sanity because they can't afford to remove. America is like the status symbol for the families of the rich. So their families are there. If you say the man can't go, no problem. They have the money. They will just move the whole family. They have one month vacation somewhere in the coast of Spain and then they are, they are good. Everybody goes back and they come back here. All right, uh, Daily Independent uh, newspaper. Two stories uh, that are really trending. Reps Kika get us um, Bajabia Miller adjourns plenary indefinitely, and LP supporters mob fashionable chairman a papa in court. Let's take them side by side. Yeah, I'll tell you the, the, the first one is Bajabia Miller is a, is being smart. He's a shit up guy because you see. This, he, he's, he's deploying what I always call emotional intelligence in the sense that, you see, he wants a situation where you come and indicate publicly who you are supporting, okay? And they know that that would be a terrible trap because why was he not deploying that all along when they are voting for bills? Let us know those who are throwing out the bills that had to do with the women and everything. No. But now, he, it's like he, he wants to, it, it's an indirect form of, of, um, of um, I'm trying to get the word, if I remember, I'll, I'll bring it up. You know, where you, you put the people on the spot.
to show that they are against the party, okay? And then to show that they don't want to do what Mr. President said they should do. Now, this guy said, no, 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 no. We won't. If, if, if they allow the plenary to go, it's easy to impeach them and change the law and let it be open secret ballot. You know, we're all openly uh, 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 balloting, but they're secretly doing that. So you don't know who I stood for or even voice votes, let the yes and the nays and any of those things. But, you know, he wants everybody to know who you voted for and the people don't like that. As a result, to make sure that there's no room for them to get together and impeach him, he adjourns uh, the plenary in indefinitely. So I think as soon as he's able to get his act together, he can bring them back, you know, or he can even bring them back at the last day when nothing can be done again. Then that of a papa, I think that a, the relations of that man should please, if they love him, tell <laughs> him to trade cautiously. <laughs> People are hurting. People are unhappy. People are really, people are developing high blood pressure. Let the process in the court just give people the means to ventilate their, their, their frustrations. For this man to go and say, withdraw the case from court, he has no idea of doing it. Look, there is my wife and the fellow director here and um, this guy had a had, um, had, had a program on trauma healing. People are traumatized. Nigerians are traumatized. And it could get to a point of insanity where somebody out of... Look at what happened in the aircraft, in the bomb aircraft, one man like that. You don't know what's going on. So I don't know what game the man is playing. I think that that guy should trade cautiously. And this issue of the obedient family, the Peter Obi movement and all those things is something that involves the youths. And the youth right now need to be handled with some level of caution. So this guy coming out is risking his life. And I just want to call on his family to tell that guy to trade cautiously. I don't think I want, and again, he's embarrassing himself. Look at what happened the other day. You go to court, look for a way to sit down if you must sit down. No, I must sit down here. No, I am the It's like, it's so childish that I really can't understand what man's game is. So they say he's paid. Even when you are paid, even you must steal, must you drop all the oil all over your body and let people know that you've stolen the meat from the from the pot? <laughs> that guy should get good advice how to tell him what to do. All right. Well, well, let's also talk about how that this is taking attention from the case in the court at the tribunal. Nah, nah, because nah, right now it, it appears to be the, the a very good distraction from the case uh, that we are looking at or should be looking at. Let, let, me, let me ask you, who will want to have that distraction? Is it Labour Party or the opposition that feel that Labour Party actually do have a case and they are worried that that case must not go on? And as a result, Nigerian system, rather than build your own you know, counter defense, you rather try to you know, scatter the opposition. If people are, 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 are marching, are protesting, instead of you allowing them to protest or giving them reason why that should not be, you now send some hoodlums there to go and infiltrate them and create a, you know, a confusion so that it will seem as if those people are not coherent. I think that it's a, an opposition game and I think it's absolutely unnecessary. I want to call on the courts, the judges, the lawyers, to just know that Nigerians are watching. Let the eyes be on the ball. This issue of a distraction is cheap. It's, 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 in, it's disingenuous. It just doesn't show people who have depth of thought. There are better ways to get, get into these issues and address them. There are better things to do and gain the confidence of well-meaning Nigerians that are in the far majority than wanting to distract with some of these antics. Very, very soon. This matter will be laid to rest, and I want to see where Mr. Papa will go next and his relevance. Where, where was he during the election? Mm. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Zikanya, I took for your time. It's always fun having you talk to us about these issues uh, that we see on our headlines. Do have a great Thanks, day, sir. and see you next thank Thursday. You. All of you. Thank you. Ezekiel Nyatuk has joined us. He's a public affairs analyst. You look at some of the headlines on the national dailies. It is entrepreneurial Wednesday, Thursday on The Breakfast. And we'll be back to take a look at our very first hot topic.